stewardship of the Kantai and Christina King this summer, uh, and with the support of our vendors and sponsors, uh, the market is having an excellent year. And I think the market is really demonstrating the power that farmers markets uh, can have in helping to revitalize our communities. Obviously, they support local agriculture. Chautauqua County has over 1,600 farms, more farms than any other county in New York State. Farmers markets bring activity to the centers of our communities and help to revitalize our downtowns, like here in downtown Jamestown. They improve access to healthy and affordable food options uh, to people who have high need and low mobility. And they can serve as a cornerstone for wider efforts to improve urban food systems, such as initiatives here in Jamestown to promote community gardening. And just last month, the Jamestown City Council uh, passed revised zoning codes uh, to promote community gardening here in Jamestown. So all of this can be tied together by farmers' markets. Vibrant downtowns, healthy neighborhoods, healthy communities, and strong urban rural connections. The Jamestown Renaissance Corporation is very grateful this year to have a grant from the United States Department of Agriculture to support our work, and we're very honored this morning to have Senator Kirsten Gillibrand here. Richard Zink from the Southern Tier West will be speaking along with Jessica Rungi, who's from Roots and Wings, CSA. She'll be speaking. But I also want to recognize, uh, I don't think it actually, uh, what's the word, amplifies that, it doesn't. Uh, so I'll speak out. Uh, I want to thank Jamestown Mayor Sam Teresi for being here, along with our county legislators, Fred Croskett and County Legislator Corey Cornell and County Legislator Vince Morgan. Thank you all for your public service. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you being here to be part of this debate. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be at a farmer's market. I intend to buy some great food afterwards. Uh, my boys love chocolate, so I'm going over to the fudge table for sure. <laughs> um, agriculture and food services is one of New York's leading industries, as indicated by its approximate $38 billion impact on our state economic output and the 196,000 jobs generated statewide. Of that, $38 billion in total output, $15.6 billion is value added that stays within our communities. As New York's first senator to serve on the Senate Agriculture Committee in more than 40 years, I'm committed to being a voice for our farmers and for our producers all across the state. As I've toured our farms and our markets across the state, I've heard from folks about the challenges of connecting farmers who are working to expand their markets for their products with families who are eager to buy those products and having fresh, locally grown foods at their kitchen table. In addition, so much of the farm bill is focused on commodity crops instead of the specialty crops, which is what we grow here right in upstate New York. We need special crop policies that protect our fruits and our vegetables uh, from tough environmental challenges, from bad weather, from disease, from uh, various invasive species. Here in Chautauqua County, there are over 1,600 farms with an average size of just 142 acres. These are small family farms that have been part of western New York's landscape for generations and something that I'm fighting very hard to preserve. I'm proud to have several provisions that I offer, authored and fought for in this year's Farm Bill. This legislation connects our farms to our families and communities, promotes good food and good health, and strengthens American, America's jobs and our economy. First, it gives our specialty crop farmers the tools they need to prosper by expanding access to credit at USDA for farmers who are struggling. That's one of the most important things our farmers need. They need capital to grow their production, grow their farms, add new crops, add value-added products. So getting that capital is very important. Improving crop insurance for fruit and vegetable farmers by allowing 100% reimbursement for the development of new specialty crop insurance programs in the private sector, requiring the USDA to conduct additional research on specialty crops with the purpose of improving crop insurance policies for fruit and vegetable farmers. This is largely because in the past, when we wrote crop insurance policies, it was only for commodity farmers. So the policies only worked if you planted in the same cycles as commodity farmers. That did not work for fruits and vegetables. And so frankly, there was no policy that a New York farmer would actually want to buy that would actually cover their loss should there be uh, some kind of damage or weather or other issue. Third, 
eliminating duplicative inspection fees for apple farmers on their bulk bin apples exported to Canada, which will save New York apple producers time and money. It's kind of crazy that you had to pay additional on both sides of the border uh, and to have those inspections because it wasted time, it wasted money, and it's unnecessary. So that's just an easy fix that we're working on. Second, it expands local, local markets for family farmers and high need communities like Jamestown, which has two census tracts classified as food deserts by the USDA. Now, a food desert, you couldn't imagine it being in such a bountiful place in Western New York, but oftentimes you have whole places where there's not accessible fruits and vegetables at an affordable rate for families. And that's what a food desert is. You'd be surprised how many we have all across New York, from Western New York to New York City to the North Country. We have real food deserts where families cannot access fruits and vegetables in an affordable way. So we've provided one-time grants and loans to increase access to affordable fresh food in high-need areas. So for example, if there is a person who wants to put out a farmer's market like this, there's grants available to do exactly that or to do a corner store where local farmers can bring their fruits and vegetables to sell them. Those kind of ideas. Um, it also fund, there's funding to support the development of community supported agriculture or CSAs and farm shares like Roots and Wings Farm which directly connect farmers and consumers for the growing season. Those are terrific, very effective policies because it allows the consumer to have a relationship directly with the farm to get the fruits and vegetables that, that the families need. And last, it gives farmers markets the equipment they need to accept SNAP. So if you are on food assistance and you get your monthly allotment through the SNAP program, you can come to a farmer's market like this and get amazing fruits and vegetables uh, with, with that credit. These provisions, I believe, will help America's farmers sell their products more, including New York, grown apples, grapes, onions, leafy greens, dairy, and more directly to the families, directly to our communities, so that we have a healthier economy, but we also have healthier families. So I'd now like to uh, ask our next speaker to come up, uh, Richard Zink, Southern Tier West. Good morning, and um, I'd like to thank Senator Gillibrand for coming to Jamestown to discuss the needs and the benefits of, of building up our local food system. Um, a system that includes farmers, farmers markets, CSAs, restaurants, schools, um, and individual consumers. As a director of the regional planning board that covers three counties of Chautauqua, Cataracts, and Allegheny, we are working on a regional branding effort to, to help promote 16 markets, of which there are 16 now across our region. And each market is, is faced with its own challenges, but it also provides its own opportunity to not only the, the communities that um, promote it, but for the citizens that live in those communities to, to have a, a better um, opportunity to have healthy food provided to them. Anyone that has started a, a backyard garden knows the, the trials and tribulations that, that come along with that. You know, you, you plot out your land, you plant the seeds, you see it grow, you harvest it, and you know what to do with it. Well, for each farmer's market that, that is in existence, we're asking these vendors to, to provide for 100, 200, maybe 500 people on a weekly basis. And we continually ask them to overcome the challenges that face them, whether it be um, the light, whether it be the weather, whether it be um, just the economics of being able to you know, put their family aside for two days a week to provide the local food that sort of um, helps to grow the local economy. And so that's why I think it's so great about so much of the farm bill that the senator is promoting is that it addresses the needs. Um, it helps the, the farmer to have the resources they need in order to you know, grow their produce and bring it to market, but it also helps the consumers who may have problems with mobility issues in getting to the local market. It may help the consumer who has problems affording the food at the farmer's market through SNAP um, to be able to take that back to their their house and and provide to their family. But there's more resources that are needed. Sometimes when you come to a farmer's market, you see vegetables that you've never seen before. You know, Swiss chard is, is not something that everyone has a recipe for in their box um, that they can pull out. And then during zucchini season... Do you have a good Swiss chard? <laughs> 
Very good for you. Jessica does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you can give me one, I'll buy some. <laughs> and so it's bringing all these resources together, you know, not only the, the grower, the producer, the institutions, but also the consumer, so that the local, local economy grows and prospers and it sort of builds upon itself. And I think if you step back and see how much food is consumed locally, you know, a small percentage of that can have a great impact if it starts to be consumed by or from local resources. And so with that, I, I really appreciate the efforts that the Senator is putting forth to really help the local economy grow and our region. Ranji from Roots and Wayne CSS. <laughs> thank you for having me here and, and thank you for not just visiting but for involving the farmers as well. Quite Please speak up. Um, in case you don't recognize me in these clothes, my name is Jessica Rungi. Uh, my husband and I own Roots and Wings Farm in Cherry Creek and I'm also part of the Chautauqua Region Farm to Table group as well as I assist when I can with the Farm to School program. Um, like I said, our farm is in Cherry Creek. We are certified organic and we offer a non-traditional community supported agriculture program. Um, these things, plus the fact that I'm relatively young and female and I'm new to farming, are the reasons why my dairy farmer friends, generally male and older, uh, tend to laugh and roll their eyes when they talk to me. <laughs> so we're a little different, but while our farm is unique, as all farms are, it, we're actually quite typical of the Chautauqua County farm. And that's why I think we've, I've been asked to speak on behalf of our local farmers. Um, you may not know it, but Chautauqua County has more than 1,600 farms, which is the highest number of farms in the state. We rank number two in acreage for fruit production, and we rank number eight in acreage for vegetable yes. production. So Chautauqua County has a lot going for it. Um, our farm, like the others in Chautauqua County, is small. We have only 32 acres. Uh, the average farm is 142 acres. We are diversified, we raise diverse crops with vegetables, a little bit of fruit, small grains, pork and poultry. Um, we are providing insurance and a stable income. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. Um, we are low staffed. I do most of the work. My husband helps when he can and I hire a couple of kids when I have money and they have the time. Um, the cost of labor is prohibitive for us, especially when we are starting the farm from scratch. Um, our farm is personal. We direct market our crops through several outlets through a CSA. Uh, we work through farm markets in Fredonia and also to restaurants and schools. There's no third, part, third person marketing our crops. We do it all on our own. Um, like the other farms in the area, our farm is high risk. We grow specialty crops like Senator Gillibrand mentioned. We grow vegetables and we grow things that can't be insured. Um, so if something happens, then we're done. <laughs> um, the different pieces of legislation that Senator Gillibrand is proposing and working toward would have a significant positive impact on our area's farms and across the state. It would expand markets and sales opportunities, uh, the demand for local food on all tables, whether at home and restaurants and schools or in institutions will grow. Food deserts will shrink, uh, Jamestown and Dunkirk both are classified as food deserts. Farmers will be better able to serve our disadvantaged neighbors when SNAP technologies are upgraded to mobile applications and SNAP benefits are, are increased. Um, it, it would just be great to be able to provide SNAP benefits to, 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 to accept SNAP benefits from at places other than farmers markets. Um, our kids will be healthier. Schools will be able to purchase local foods without all the red tape that they currently have, which will further improve our county farm to school program. Our kids will eat fresh, nutritious local food grown right here in our, in our backyards. Our farms will be successful and they will be profitable. Our farms will have better access to training programs, business planning, and access to startup capital and improvement funds. Our farmers will be happier because they can sleep at night knowing that their crops will be insured. They won't have to worry so much. Uh, our products will be, our farm products will be awesome. They'll be of higher quality, they'll have higher yields, thanks to increased funding for agricultural research and technical assistance on behalf of groups like Cooperative Extension and, and Nova New York. And then we'll have more jobs. Um, as there's more money in the farmers' pockets, they can hire more people to help out with work. And that's just better for everybody in the entire economy. Farm policy is in need of major reform now. I think Senator Gillibrand is headed in the right direction. And 
farming without a farm bill is like working without a contract. Um, I hope you all understand that. And please educate yourself about the current state of farm policy and how it affects the person who grows your food. Use your voice, use your dollars, and be an advocate for your local farmer. Thank okay. you. Yeah, Senator, I know that uh, the House has passed this version of a five-year farm bill, but uh, snapping there is uh, the way it currently is. Uh, your thoughts about that? Can there be re reconciliation between the House and the Senate? I'm hopeful that we bring the bill to conference and that in that conference we can advocate strongly for the SNAP portion of the bill. I think it's essential that hungry children, veterans, uh, active duty service members, and seniors have the food they need. Those are the people who will be negatively impacted by these cuts to food stamps. And all of us should stand by our vets, our active duty service members, our seniors, and particularly hungry children. So I think it's a moral issue. I'm gonna fight very hard to make sure that money is preserved because we want our families to be eating well. Senator. Okay. Yes, uh, first of all, Fred Krosky, a Farm Bureau member, South County Legislature. I commend you on the work you've done. I applaud you, and on behalf of the Farm Bureau, I thank you. I also want to make it clear that that we need, people don't always understand the agricultural side of the farm bill and the nutrition side of the farm bill. And this has been one of the stumbling blocks, so I know the House is working towards that. I know the House has been a roadblock to this, but I, I applaud all of you for that, but we still, Unfortunately for agriculture, you maybe have to tie the agricultural part to the nutrition part because us as farmers feel that maybe we'll get short chains or we won't have the cloud if we don't have a nutrition bill in there. But that also helps with cooperation between the rural and the it's urban urban. people because things like this make people understand. Yeah. We this, eat the food our yes. farmers grow. <laughs> and, and it's not grown in, in Founders in Alley. Yes. You know, so, uh, but I know even in our county, we have to continue to work with the non-rural yep. people to let them understand what we do. Absolutely. So I commend you for that. I thank you on behalf of Farm Bureau and Stoppa County. But uh, I, I realize the stumbling block is between agriculture and nutrition. A lot of farmers say, oh, really, it's nutrition bills tied to agriculture. Well, yes, that's the way it and is. 16 cents from every dollar that goes to SNAP goes directly to farmers. So the, all the money that we put in to make sure our families have the foods they need to survive, it goes right back to farmers. They're tied. They're fundamentally intertwined. Again, thank you. And uh, I tell you, cooperative extension, we couldn't do it without them either. And I want to put a quick plug in for them. Senator, is there anything to do with the education um, to encourage young people to go into agriculture? I know my father was an ag teacher. and. Um, they eliminated that program back in the 50s at yeah. his school. And there just seems to be a lot of people. I talked to a farmer this uh, past weekend. He said he was going to increase his dairy herd and said he sold it off because he couldn't find qualified people to help him run the thing. And he couldn't expand because of lack of people who could do yeah. agriculture and well, one of the dairy farming. Um, we've been doing around the state, and we had one not too far from here in Buffalo is where we got high school kids to work at fire farmers markets and do community-based farming. So they would learn about agriculture as an industry and food service as an industry. And it was interesting, just like we mentioned with some vegetables here, a lot of the kids who were manning the farm stand had never eaten half the vegetables on the farm stand. Um, and the kids were working this local inner city, inner city farm to learn how to grow things and what it's like to grow. That, in just a very small way, introduces agriculture to any inner city kids. And if they like it, these are careers for them. These are real opportunities to be part of agriculture. And I think the more we can do that, the more we can fund those kinds of programs, you're going to create more interest in that as an industry. Right. Last one. Is there a plan B if the stamp bill gets through kind of the agriculture? Yes, President Obama will veto the bill. And then? And then you start over again. And that means everything's funded at the current level. So it's not great because a lot of the reforms that I just talked about are new uh, and making sure we can help our fruits and vegetable growers and help our dairy farmers. So those won't be included. So if, you, if we fail to reach a compromise in conference, then the president will be chosen the bill if it has no food stamps and we will start from scratch again. Thank you.